All right, moving right along. This question marks something completely different from what we saw in the other questions. In this question, we've now got it going through a vertical circle. If you look back, all the other questions only had one force pulling it towards the center. We started with a car on a roundabout, the turning force, which was equal to friction. Then we did kind of like the lab strings making things going in a circle, so just tension being the force that pulls it towards the middle. We'll circle back to that, no pun intended, but we'll come back to that idea of with one force causing it to move when we get to satellites. Uh, but in the meantime, in vertical circles, we have to consider two forces. For this first one, I'm gonna start with a yo-yo on the end of a string for the simple reason that strings can only pull. So we don't really have to think about the direction of the force on the, that the string is putting on the yo-yo. Strings can only pull. Um, when the yo-yo is at the top of a circle, there's going to be two forces acting on it when it's at the top. Gravity's pulling it straight down, making it go in its circle, and the string is pulling it down. They're both down in this case. Strings can only pull. Gravity's always down. So at the top of the circle, they're helping each other out. When we set up F net equals MA, which we're always going to do for things going in a circle, the A is going to turn into V squared over R. Then we have to think about our forces and the directions. In this case, at the top of the circle, in centripetal, the objects are always accelerating towards their center. So when it's at the top of the circle, this yo-yo is accelerating straight down. Down becomes my positive. In this particular setup, they're both downward, so they're both going to be positive. Then we can just crunch out what we know. Gravity is always mg. I'm going to solve for ft, and that's equal to mv squared over r. So the tension all by itself is going to be the mass multiplied by the v squared, which in this case was 4, divided by the radius of 0.9 meters. Oops. And then uh, we've got to flip it to the other side so it turns into a subtraction to mass times 9.8. Because gravity is helping tension, it's actually a little bit less tension at the top than what we're going to find at the bottom. Uh, cranking it out this way, uh, the numbers work out kind of nice. I get a tension of 0 0.5 newtons. That's at the top of the circle. The bottom of the circle, the free body diagram is going to be different. At the bottom of the circle, gravity is going to be straight down. Tension is going to be up. Strings can only pull, so I know it's got to be upward. And centripetal objects always accelerate towards the center of their circle. When it's at the bottom of its circle, it's accelerating towards the center, which happens to be up. So when we set up F net equals MA, the A turns into V squared over R. But this time in our tug of war, it's accelerating upward. So I'm going to make up positive. So this turns into tension as a positive minus gravity as a negative. That's my F net. That's going to be equal to MV squared over R. When I flip things around to solve for tension this time, when I move the mg to the other side, it's got a positive. We're going to get a larger tension at the bottom than we did at the top. If we plug in the numbers, you can see for yourself. Solving for that, I got a tension of 1.7. This is a fundamental thing about vertical circles that we'll see and we'll use to solve problems. When an object's going in a vertical circle, when it's at the bottom, gravity's in the wrong direction. So the tension or whatever the upward force is has to match gravity and then some to get it to accelerate up into that circular motion. So at the bottom, uh, we're always gonna have a tension that's larger. At the top, the tension will always be smaller. If there is a risk of this string breaking, Maybe you're spinning the yo-yo, just spin it faster, faster, faster until it breaks. It's always going to break at the bottom because that's where the string has to do the most, most pulling. It has to beat gravity by enough to create the mv squared over r. So tension's always biggest at the bottom. If it's going to break, it's going to break at the bottom. And the other condition that we'll get to is if you start spinning too slow, the danger might be that gravity's too strong, that it doesn't need tension to make it go in its circle. Uh, pretend you're playing with a yo-yo or anything on the end of a string. If you spin it really slowly, it might actually not, it might not go in a circle. When it gets to the top, it might fall into the middle. That's the condition we'll get to at the top. Uh, Physics-wise, 
the threshold would be when the tension is zero. That's the slowest you could get it to go around the circle is when at the top the tension or whatever that secondary force is drops to zero. And at the bottom the issue is if you're going too